What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're up here at Winger Performance, Daryl Winger. Not everything that we film makes it to the internet for your viewing pleasure, but today, if you're seeing this, this means that we've found something, hopefully, um, or we have unfortunately run into some issues, some things that we can't figure out. That's why I'm here at uh, Winger Performance. So we are stuck, dead in the water. Um, can't figure it out. This guy has a freaking helicopter, man. Let's check this out real quick. Pretty wild. That thing is crazy. It's like a little bubble. I need to get a ride in this. That thing is wild, man. All right, on to the Mustang. Looking good as always, but a couple of issues. Under wide open throttle, not anything going on crazy, but at idle and low speed, so let's say 2,500 RPM or less, we have a significant uh, lean condition going on. So. Short term, long term, all over the place, both uh, banks one and two. Generally when that happens, I'm gonna pop my hood. Generally that happens, oh, I forgot that I've got these stupid hood pins. Hood pins gotta go first because race car, right? Generally when you have fuel trim issues, especially positive at idle, that points in the direction of really three or four different things most commonly is going to be a vacuum leak of some kind. Um, if it's not a vacuum leak, it could be exhaust, so check that too, um, or fuel, as they're all three related basically, or tune. We can't really go back to a stock tune because we are twin turboed at this point. We'll go ahead and pop the hood, let it cool off, since we're gonna be all over this car today. And uh, weather is looking super awesome, definitely gonna rain no fun basically what's happening is when you have positive fuel trims usually that means like it's a vacuum leak of some kind problem is that we can't find one um, i have tore this car apart more times than i can count and uh, i i can't figure it out took it down to ken's shop we smoke tested the car twice uh, we did a leak down test compression test all of those things passed still couldn't find the issue couldn't find any leaks couldn't find nothing so to be a vacuum leak it has to be post math well you can also have a pre sensor leak so when i'm talking about sensor i'm talking about bank one and two uh basically your o2 wideband sensors down there the front ones the rears remember get turned off in the tune to wrap things up to let you know what we have done what i have done is I have changed MAF sensor, O2 sensors. Once those things didn't work, I did find that we had on this wiring harness that goes down here on the Gen 3, found an issue where the wires got a little too tight, a little too close to the uh, header down there. Shout out D Jarek Forbes on Instagram, hooked me up with a new one. That wiring harness does connect to a wideband on this bank. Change that out, it needed to be fixed. No change though, didn't change anything. So really frustrating. Check relays, plugs, this, that, and the other, all of it. Um, what was next, what was next, what was next? Um, we swapped fuel regulators. Um, we even changed like these positions where they feed into the DI. We thought that we might have actually a DI problem because we could not find at a Ford dealership any issues with this car whatsoever. So I actually changed the fuel pump, the uh, DI pump right there. So I changed it. Yep, same issue. Was the old one bad? No. Change the high side sensor. Those can be a problem. Oh yeah, we changed the entire intake manifold itself. So we've checked um, injectors, the port injectors here for any air leaks. I've had a stethoscope all over the car. I mean, and when I say all over the car, I mean every little nook and cranny. I've been listening for uh, air coming in. Can't find anything. We put the, the car in IDES, which is a Ford program to help you diagnose this, that, and the other, whatever. But uh, the issue is that we've been having lean code. And I'm talking about when, let's say I reset cam, for example. I will pretty much immediately get positive fuel trim, short term, uh, in the upper 60s. In the upper 60s, yes, I said that right, Six zero. So if that were a vacuum or an exhaust leak, you would hear it. It would be audible, it would be loud. Now here's the interesting things, both bank one and two, we are showing the exact same short-term fuel trim across the board, and the same is true with Lambda, both banks one and two. One Lambda bank one, one Lambda bank two. So that pretty much eliminates an exhaust leak. It's all even across the board. So it might be Daryl right there. So, all right, we're gonna quit rambling, see if we can diagnose a couple of things. We're here because he can hook up his computer's laptop and uh, he can see more PIDs 
on his laptop than I can on the Engage. So let's get to it. The word of the street is you're the guy to help me. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess uh, kind of last resort. What's your theory from what I told you so far? That's a hard one to call. Uh, <laughs> like the first thing I would have said vacuum leak, but you guys kind of ruled that out with. Uh, Smoked it three like, times at this point. Yeah, in. we've chased about as much as possible. Ed is Ford dealership, you know what I mean? So I don't know. We just can't find the issue. But uh, I've got some news. We're trying to survive. It is raining crazy outside. <laughs> And I'm on drag radial, so this is a recipe of it's a recipe for death 100%. This is super sketchy, super sketchy. That's all like like a big lake right there. And I'm getting pushed all around the road now. I'm sliding. This is this is crazy. It's windy, and uh, you probably can't see the trees. This is bad. I'll just do 35 mile an hour the whole way back for the next hour. So Daryl did not see a vacuum leak of any kind. We worked hand in hand with Rob a little bit and got the tune dialed uh, in as much as possible. There is a couple weird things that my car is doing. This is truly a one-off problem. So I don't want to speak badly on like any company. That's not what this is about. Remember, I had an engine failure in this car. We pieced it back together. We replaced everything with new parts everything wow okay i'm losing this is really sketchy fuel trim uh you don't want to be higher than 10 or under negative 10. you want to live somewhere in between as close to zero as possible if you look at my i'm off the gas but what i can't really get on it this is bad when i'm on the gas see like it's at five right now long term that's oh jesus this is sketchy I've been in the rain on drag radios before, but this is this is really bad. And we're going uphill, so it's just that much worse. The forecast, I did check the forecast, and it wasn't supposed to start raining till later on. So I thought that we were gonna be good, but you know, Mother Nature had other plans. Fuel trims are better. They're not totally perfect, but we're in the right direction. So still a couple of things I guess we could check over the car. I can't imagine what those would be, but three days later. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another video. I'm not really sure how this one's gonna play out, but something in the background is missing. Yeah, I still got the bike. Still got the twin turbo Mustang over here. Yeah, the Jeep is gone, guys. About a year ago, I guess. Wow, time flies. Uh, we bought a 2004 daily drive. It's a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Bought it with a uh, couple of issues and pretty cool that we were able to actually solve those issues. Like for example, I replaced a PCV valve uh, in that car. The thing had like 150,000 miles on it. Fixed it for like six bucks and then bam, check engine light is gone and decided that we were going to go ahead and sell it. This is actually something that I've been thinking about doing as not like a career or anything like that, but like a hobby maybe like a, just a side project hustle, is maybe buying a vehicle here or there, fixing a couple of issues, and then flipping them for a little bit of extra money, roll that money into something else, and just keep the process going. A lot of you guys out there probably do the same thing or have wanted to do something similar. So that Jeep was a great daily driver. It's really cool to have a paid off, even if it's older. Yes, we have an expensive Mustang. We've got other fancy toys here and there, but uh, I like is having a daily driver, something you can take to Walmart, on road trips, whatever, and it doesn't break the bank. And if it gets door dinged or crash totaled, whatever, you're not really out of pocket that much. You don't have to fight with insurance. It just doesn't matter. But something that I've been kind of wanting to toy around with, the idea of, yes, buying a vehicle, fixing an issue or two, and then being able to push that extra profit into something else a little bit bigger. Maybe maybe it might be older, might be newer, might be different, whatever. And then just basically just keep that process going. And then, uh, yeah, it's a good way to make money or just, you know, experience different vehicles. A lot of older vehicles, you can do that. Uh, kind of a cool little side hustle. But today, a uh, good friend of mine, Joey, follow him on Instagram and YouTube at Whistlefish13. Links down here if you want to go check him out. It's a good friend of mine, Joey. He's coming up from Bowling Green. He's going to special deliver the new vehicle here in just a couple of minutes. He's about, I think, 30 minutes out while I'm filming this. I'm very excited and uh, be able to show you guys what we have bought. This is not going to blow anybody's mind, I don't think, when you see this. But it's kind of cool nonetheless that we were able to take something older fix an issue for about six bucks and then flip it for an additional like 500 because that's exactly what we did. Paid $2,000 to the vehicle. Uh, I drove it around, just put gas in it, never let me down. It was reliable. Fixed a $6 PCV valve and then we're able to flip it 
for about 500 extra bucks. And then we're gonna take that extra 500 bucks that we made and we're gonna turn around and give it to Joey. It's gonna be really exciting. So I don't really know what we're gonna do with this vehicle yet. It's kind of a cool platform because we can do a lot with it. We can lift it, we can do crazy things, get ready. I'm excited, but yeah. So hopefully he'll get here before the sun goes down and we'll just keep rocking and rolling. All right. Got a bit of a squeak there. See something else to fix. And we can turn around and sell it. All right. What's up, man? Hello, hello. How are you? Good, good. How you doing? Good, man. Good fist bump. Yeah, man. Oh, we made it. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you making the drive. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. I'm working on getting some of my things and yeah, we're all losing, that good stuff. Losing the sunlight, unfortunately. So this is it. This is yeah, so you already replaced the wheels and the tires. Oh, we're gonna have to pick this up in the morning, I think. I'm losing all the sunlight. Got us an expedition. Got us an expedition, huh? Third row seating, good. Got the running boards he put, he, he put on there. A little spot there, we'll fix that. All right. So you already changed them. Yeah, I was actually there's a company that was wanting to send me some lights. Yeah, I was going to actually <laughs> go ahead and replace these, but you already did. That's cool, man. The LED lights. Already upgraded. There we go. I mean, I heard a little bit of a front end squeak coming up here. Ball joints. Ball joints, I figured. I already looked up, like, prices and stuff. Yeah. So, but that was kind of cool. Like, the, the Jeep we paid, you know, like, 2000 bucks for. Yeah. And then it had a check engine light coming on for um, the PCV. And I, so I, I replaced it for like six bucks, you know, yeah. AutoZone. Right, yeah. And then sold it for another 500 bucks. I don't know if we'll keep this one forever either, but um, for what you're selling it to me for, I think it's possible. We're certainly not going to lose money on it. No, absolutely not. Yeah. The uh, the window tint looks good. You just did that, right? Just did the window tinting, yes. You got the strip across there. What a uh, percentage? Uh, five. Oh. oh. Tennessee might not. <laughs> It, it's five percent okay um there the sun strips five percent the rear doors and the rear quarter glasses yeah are uh 20 percent on top of the factory tending to make it five all right yeah. you don't know right there acs window tending if you're in the bowling green area please go check out joey's shop he does this as a profession he's got his own business doing just this so i mean the quality of work i've seen it firsthand i mean it's great Thanks. so Thanks. um it. i may actually take mine to come see you here sooner yeah, or later gotta do that yeah it's got you've seen it there's a couple of issues there's a couple of things we're gonna take <laughs> i didn't even point him out he caught him we're gonna take care oh, of oh you already so put the seat in the back cool. Throw seats back in sweet uh you got that All right. uh, it's been good for me the what month i think that i've had it yeah um ac works the uh, radio display didn't work but the radio does play and i think you said you were gonna change it out anyway. yeah we'll probably swap to uh a, uh, a double den or something like that um make it a little bit more fancy i did that in the jeep too brings up the, yeah. the resale value i guess a little bit for some they don't have to worry about it exactly. but yeah and you also have the receiver the class three receiver hitch yep so we can tow the mustang with this the tow capacity yeah. is uh up to par for towing the race car so um also pretty cool it's all we're gonna refix this i got a company i'm gonna reach out to and see if we can get this reupholstered breathe some life back into uh in, into this this fine vehicle here and uh just make it a little bit nicer not that it's bad right now i liked it when i first saw it i was in love with it i was like man i gotta have this how much you want and you told me the price and i was like i can't pass it up i really can't for the money um this one's pretty cool because it came with where's it at right here the adjustable pedals when this was new because this is a 2000 2001 2001 though. So when this was new, uh, this would have been like a premium, I guess, option. You got the sunroof, all of that looks good. And uh, this also has the 5.4 uh, Triton V8 in it. So a little bit of a mileage increase versus the uh, the Jeep that we just got rid of, but we're gaining a bigger vehicle and uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah, the body's in great shape. Uh, we'll address, I'll fix the ball joints, that's easy enough. Get rid of any squeaks we find. Maybe touch it up here or there, but I mean, yeah, super and, uh, impressed. Yeah. Side, side note. Yep. Uh, 
this was going to be pulling, uh, just so you know the confidence I have in this vehicle, Sure. it was going to be pulling my 19 to four takeover. Ah. So now I'm on a hunt for me a truck to find for four takeover. So now what I need to do next is really find a trailer. Trailer. Mm -hmm. Because then we can tow the twin turbo beast here, keep it safe on the road on the back of a trailer. And uh, yeah, this thing is coming together, guys. Uh, lots of videos uh, on the channel. If you want to see fast twin turbo stuff, uh, I've covered this in tons and tons and tons of videos, lots of content. If you guys are new to the channel, go, go check it out. And then you have... A beautiful green 2019 Mustang. How do you like that K-Member you just put in? I love it. I just need to take and put some miles on it. Too dark to even. Yeah, iPhone, sorry. Ford Takeover, June 6th in Jackson, Tennessee. Speed Addict 731, myself, uh, Joey here. So a bunch of YouTubers, other bigger channels, smaller channels, everybody, just people that are not on YouTube, just want to go out there and run their cars. June 6th, trying to get this car figured out dialed in so that we can start making some passes but uh, i'd love to see you guys out there if you catch this video in time and uh yeah links down in the description for all the the details